Hi there, welcome to FMCG by Alex. My name is Alex and today I would like to talk to you about ERP systems and how they make your life better when you work in an FMCG company. So without any technical jargon, what is an ERP system exactly? So it stands, ERP stands for Enterprise Resource Planning. And it connects basically all of the departments. So everything is connected to each other and works from the same data in real time. So in essence, you don't have silos, you don't have double entries, you don't have stockouts, and you don't have late deliveries. At least that is trying to avoid it. Yeah, If everything works smoothly and everybody acts on the real-time data. So in FMCG, ERP helps coordinate uh, the raw materials ordering, so whatever is needed for production, then of course the production planning, yeah, the raw materials are needed for production, needs to really work in tandem. Then, of course, whatever is produced, inventory control, that also goes for raw materials, by the way. Then you have warehouse operations, or so where everything is stored. Um, and then, of course, the sales and customer orders, because after it's in the warehouse, of course, people are ordering the product and it needs to be shipped out. So this is the sales and customer orders that need to be processed. And then after it's shipped out and sold, uh, the invoices need to be sent out. And of course, payments needs to be received and everything comprised together basically in financial reporting. So these are the things that ERP helps coordinate in practice. Then we go to the modules that actually are needed in ERP uh, for FMCG companies. So you have the procurement model, so that is actually automating raw material purchasing, ingredients and packaging, etc. Then it's of course track supplier pricing, the lead times and purchase orders. So if you order something like, okay, how long does it take to actually get to my warehouse? Then you have production planning, MRP. Um, so basically it translates uh, into uh, its sales forecast into production schedules. Uh, it ensures correct quantities of raw materials uh, are on hand. Uh, it's critical for managing short shelf life uh, products, uh, of course. Um, then, of course, you have inventory management. Then uh, it's uh, real-time stock levels in the warehouse, uh, factory or in transit. The uh, FIFO or FIFO logic, uh, especially important for perishables. Then uh, batch and lot tracking for uh, traceability. So which batches actually went out? Let's say there is a production error, eh? like things have to need to be recalled uh, or there is something wrong with the, the uh, in another way, then you need to be able to trace where it's going. Then, of course, you have uh, sales and distribution, which is uh, integrating customer orders, pricing, promotions, uh, etc. Then it routes orders to the right uh, warehouse automatically and it flags delays or stock issues immediately. And then, uh, like I said, the final, last but not least, the finance and accounting part. Then you have um, links, invoicing, payments, uh, payment terms and credit limits. Uh, then it also handles trade promotions, discounts and deductions and uh, yeah, basically real-time cash flow impact of every decision. So that is actually what it is in a nutshell. It all uh, comprises that. Then uh, we have why ERP is critical in FMCG. Now yeah, you could have deduced it, of course, from the previous uh, thing, what kind of modules. Eh? Like, it sounds very uh, robust and uh, important to have everything uh, lined up. But in essence, you have short shelf life. As ERP enables you have fast, accurate decisions. So FIFO, um, yeah, uh, first expired, first out, eh? FIFO. Uh, that is basically uh, rather than F FIFO, that is first in, first out, but first expired, first out. Uh, then you have, of course, uh, when there are a lot of SKUs basically in uh, across channels, yeah, you need to basically have an ERP system. If you're small, you can still do it in an Excel sheet, obviously. Uh, if you have only one product or two products, that is actually not uh, rocket science. But as soon as uh, SKUs, uh, let's say Unilever, uh, yeah, they have <laughs> thousands upon thousands of SKUs, of course, uh, and they need to uh, yeah, keep track of it. Then, uh, of course, you have more complex promotion mechanisms. So... Um, yeah, it integrates with the trade marketing modules and you need to budget, you need to track the ROI, etc. So it's more complicated how that is put together. Claims also are uh, processed uh, uh, from there. Eh? Like in essence, uh, that's normally the problem. Like, okay, on paper you have this and the claims will be like this, but claims are actually drawn out over a longer period of time. So that is actually how uh, ERP systems also help track that and uh, make sure that what is committed, the committed budget actually is also uh, still reserved basically for uh, various uh, uh, yeah, retailers or, or distributors that are using it. And uh, yeah, of course, you have a massive volume of transactions. So it, it automates and scales everything from processing to reporting. So meaning like, you know, once you start to scale, uh, yeah, you need to actually go into uh, an ERP system to, uh, yeah, help you 
keep track of everything. Yeah? So that's too much for one person to do. And if you have multiple uh, teams and more people, actually uh, communication becomes more difficult. So you work from the same data set, like I mentioned before, it is uh, yeah, a blessing in disguise, basically. And let's give uh, an example of a flow. So like how ERP helps you to collaborate basically with your team. So let's say uh, a sales team, uh, yeah, guys are actually very you know, excited about a new deal and they book a large promotion. So the ERP, the, uh, they enter it into the ERP. The ERP checks the stock availability. So then if the procurement, if the material is low, raw material is low for the production, the uh, procurement triggers the, uh, yeah, basically the, the purchase of raw materials. And then finance approves the budget and pricing. So ERP is also all in steps, eh? like where finance can approve something or something is held until it's approved by a certain level of uh yeah, approval, basically, approval uh, uh, by maybe a director or by a finance manager. Then, um, you, of course, you have the production is going to schedule it, yeah, when it's approved, and then, um, yeah, everything is actually uh, connected to each other. Yeah? So you have to make sure that the production and the uh, promotion are actually, so you don't have a promotion that the production is actually uh, not ready for the promotion. So yeah, that's happened in the past where, even with big ERP systems are maybe not using it in a proper way or maybe, uh, you know, communication is not, is not uh, but the information is there to actually extract and use for this. So it, it actually avoids uh, you or saves you from having to um, email Excel sheets uh, across Teams. Yeah? So nowadays, of course, you have uh, Excel sheets in, in Google Sheets and yeah, also there is, uh, you know, from Microsoft, uh, they have a... a yeah, cooperative uh, software basically the, the technology gets better but still uh, these are versions version conflicts that you can uh, you know avoid so that's what ERP that's been invented for quite a long time like quite a long time ago it has been invented basically so everything is connected and uh, you basically have uh, no need for uh, yeah sending Excel sheets across teams and yeah everyone works off one source of truth so meaning like we don't uh, assume that uh, you know we still have raw materials in stock if they still uh, have an old excel sheet hasn't been updated uh, problem is uh, usually a system is as good as the input so the input actually needs to uh, keep in tra keep in track and if it's actually an ERP system it's basically a more uh, diligent uh, approach to uh, keeping that input uh, yeah in check basically so just having uh, your teams collaborate with an ERP system is uh, really uh, like I said a blessing I, I mentioned just before uh, Unilever. Unilever, of course, is a huge company. Yeah? There are a lot of huge companies. Unilever, PNG, uh, you know, you have Mondelez, actually, uh, you know, Kraft Heinz, basically. Those those companies are huge companies that actually have thousands upon thousands of products, like very complicated processes, multiple branches, uh, multiple companies across the world that need to be interwoven into an ERP system, basically, or multiple ERP systems that work together. Uh, the big players, eh, there are very robust systems, like you have SAP, for example, eh, which is a very famous company uh, uh, from Germany, uh, Oracle, um, Microsoft Dynamics is a big ERP system, Info Cloud Suite. So these are actually for uh, yeah, big companies. Uh, they have solutions for smaller companies as well, but in essence, uh, big players, these, these things can actually cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars, uh, if not more, actually, if you need to custom, customize it to your... Um, yeah, we, uh, I personally have worked with uh, uh, SAP and uh, also Oracle, uh, basically in, in, in various settings. Um, then, of course, you have SME. So you have a small, small, medium enterprise and scale-up level. So these are uh, systems that are quite powerful, but more uh, geared pricing-wise, especially to uh, smaller companies. So Odoo, I have actually also had the pleasure to work with uh, personally. Uh, Zoho ERP is there, uh, Akumatica. Uh, then you have, of course, localized ERP uh, vendors. So this Hash Micro, for example, in Southeast Asia. Uh, these guys actually are quite, um, yeah, I mean, uh, good at, at what they do eh? for if you say like look uh, my company is uh, still SME or scale up level so until you actually hit the multinational uh, uh, size basically these uh, systems can actually scale uh, quite effectively so um, 
if I look at it, um, customization, of course, is there for various uh, products. The, the only issue you have with uh, typical ERP platforms, yeah, with uh, the, the large ones, it costs you a lot of money to uh, customize it. So uh, there are, you know, like ERP consultants, basically. So just to give an impression, like uh, the company I work with, uh, we used to have e- SAP, so we moved to Oracle. Now, then uh, there were teams of... Um, Oracle consultants basically uh, coming in for six months and then uh, six months became 12 months uh, at huge budgets to actually customize something and they didn't really get it right until, you know, maybe 12 months down the line. So there's multiple iterations of what they were looking to capture. Uh, So in the end, yeah, from a sales perspective, um, I get it. Yeah, there's, uh, of course, quite a, a, uh, uh, you know, good thing to say look i'm a big company i can't work with a smaller vendor then you know you need to also work with robust um, yeah, erp platform so it's a bit like when you are a you know a company and you need to work with one of the big consulting firms yeah, uh, Bain, uh, you know those 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 guys basically um yeah price waterhouse coopers those 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 uh, large companies basically you you're talking about more about uh, having a you know, image, the image, yeah, um, so I can say hey, I work with McKinsey, then uh, McKinsey actually is adding more value to your to your image, basically. So the work they do is maybe not uh, inherently different from a, a smaller player, which uh, would actually go for ERP platforms as well, where, you know, maybe Odoo can do to a certain level what SAP can. Um, having said that, yeah, SAP of course is uh, also able to because they are catering to the large companies. They are also, of course, experts in very large enterprise, basically. So um, then there's another option uh, which I highly recommend you look at if you don't work with an ERP system yet and you feel like you need one. Um, there is just two things basically, which is uh, customized, so custom ERP system you can have built for you. And um, there is something called a mini ERP. Mini ERP would be similar to what you call about SME scale up level. And there is a company in Indonesia which is called Well Done Studio. They um, specialize in customized ERP systems and mini ERP systems. So basically, you get a, a very powerful system for uh, very, very little money in comparison to uh, you know the other companies. So I'm involved in that uh, company. Uh, uh, Basically, so I uh, shamelessly plug that uh, that services their services uh, at this moment. So, if you would like to have more information about it, uh, please do feel free to reach out to me and send me an email. Um, of course, you can also look them up on uh, on the website. Basically, uh, well done, studio. Basically, um, like I said, the advantages of having something built for yourself it's yours. Um, and uh, you know, again, if you have a, a a smaller system that you need to expand on so multiple modules need to be added so you can start small and you actually add more models then a custom uh, or mini erp is actually uh, yeah more flexible than uh, you know working with an out-of-the-box uh, product basically from one of the other companies so thank you for watching uh, this video please don't forget to like and subscribe follow us on uh, facebook instagram also on uh, linkedin Please feel free to reach out to me at alex at the resalesconsultancy.com if you would like to have more information. Thank you very much and I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.